Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to migrate from RAID 1 and 0 to RAID 5 and how to use MDADM or LVM to convert a software RAID 1 or 0 into RAID 5 without losing data on Linux. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. RAID 0 is known for high read and write speeds, but it is very fragile in terms of reliability. If one of the drives is out of order, all the data is going to be lost. In fact, this type is not much of a disk array because it lacks redundancy. On the contrary, RAID 1 is a very reliable solution, as all the data is duplicated to the other disk, but this approach affects the read and write speeds of the whole array. If you have a few spare drives, you can upgrade the existing disk array to RAID 5, which offers a good improvement in reliability compared to RAID 0 and gives a speed boost in comparison with RAID 1. In the end, you get a RAID 5 system which is both reliable and powerful enough to process your data faster. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to migrate from RAID 0 and RAID 1 to RAID 5 without losing your precious data in the process. All right. We've got a software MD RAID 1 system created on a Linux operating system. Uh, this array consists of two drives. We need to convert it into RAID 5 and then add one more drive, and while doing that, we have to make sure that all the data from the disk array doesn't disappear. The array contains some photos, videos, and documents. Before you start the conversion, it is recommended to back up important information, because if you make a mistake while typing commands, some data can be erased. Open the terminal and run this command to make sure that all the operations are performed from the administrator's account, and enter the password. If the disk array is mounted, you need to unmount it with this command. If the operating system tells you the target is busy, try to force this action. After that, you have to stop your RAID 1 system with the following command MDADM stop dev md0. Whether it is md0 or another name depends on the path, which needs to be checked, where md0 is the identifier for your RAID system. Of course, you can't stop it if this is the RAID system you boot from, and in this case you'll have to use a live CD. Now you need to override the metadata of the old RAID 1 system. To do it, create a RAID 5 system with the same drives that were included into the RAID 1 system, sdb and sdc, by typing this command where L5 says the array level, N2 says the number of drives it includes, and then these drives are specified. When the command is performed, the program will warn you that these drives are already used in RAID 1 system, so hit Enter to continue. To check if the conversion was successful, type this command. Now, all you have to do is to wait until RAID 5 is built. The status of this process is shown here in percent. When it's over, the command cat proc md stat will display this information. After that, you can add a new drive to the array and make it a full-featured RAID 5 system. This new drive is added as a spare one. Use the following command for this step. After that, extend the RAID system to the three active drives now including the spare drive, with this command. Check the result with the command cat proc mdstat. Now you can see that the RAID system is using three drives – sdb, sdc, sdd, and the process of conversion water reshape has begun. Its progress is shown in percent, so you have to wait until it is complete. In the end, check the disk array for errors with the following command. And use another command to extend it.
Finally, the last command updates the configuration file. If there are no errors in the course of performing these commands, all the data existing on your RAID 1 system will be transferred onto the new RAID 5, mounted, and check what's going on. As you can see, all the files are still here. And the array type has changed to RAID 5. However, you can't use this method to change from RAID 0 to RAID 5 without formatting and losing all the data. Instead, there is a way to convert it quickly with a single command. Migration from RAID 0 to RAID 5 is only possible when there are two drives. Then RAID 0 coincides with RAID 5 in terms of structure. All the changes will affect the array level only, while the information on the drives remains intact. Here is the command that transforms a RAID 0 consisting of two drives into a RAID 5 including three drives. Before you run it, unmount the array. Type the command cat proc md step to check the situation. Wait until the reshape process is over. As you can see, all the files are still there. After changing the array type to RAID 5, you can add more drives with the command you have already seen in this video. After restarting, the array name will change to RAID 5. If the RAID 0 system contains more than two drives, you need to reduce their number, and only then you'll be able to convert the array to RAID 5. If you used LVM features to create a RAID system, then you can convert it from one array type to another with the command LVConvert. First of all, let's have a look at the information stored in this array. It contains some photos, videos, and documents. Run the command PV display to view the information on this group of disks. If you want to know more about creating MD and LV RAID systems, check one of the previous videos by following the link below. To start the conversion, unmount the logical volume. Type the command. Use the following command to change the RAID level. The last step is to add the third drive to the existing group of disks with this command. When you perform it, the program warns you that the disk is already formatted. Type Y to confirm your decision and press Enter. To make sure that the disk is added to the group, use the command PV display. Now you can see the group consists of three disks. Mount the array again and open it in the file manager. All the data is here, nothing is lost. The same command is used to change from RAID 0 to RAID 5. The only important step is to add the third disk to the group before you start the conversion. Otherwise, you will see the warning that you don't have enough space for this command to run. Add the third disk. Use the following command to change the RAID level. Mount the array and check what information is available. As you can see, all files are here. If there was an error in the process of converting one RAID level into another, or if you erased some information accidentally, use a reliable data recovery tool, Hetman RAID Recovery. It reads from the storage system all the information about the controller, the motherboard, or the software used to create a disk array, and then rebuilds the damaged RAID to let you copy the lost data. Find more information about recovering MD and LV RAID in one of the previous videos. I'll put the link in the description, as always. Summing up, changing from one RAID level to another may take several steps. At first, you'll have to convert it into an interim level and then into the type you would like to have. 
For example, to change RAID 1 into RAID 6, you need to convert your system into RAID 5, and only then it will become possible to convert it into RAID 6. On the Internet, you can find a lot more information on all possible variants of changing from one level to another. And this video tutorial will help you do it step by step. So, that is all for now. Hopefully, this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!